Hello and welcome along to the next in the series of videos that I am working on with regard to setting up Chocolatey within an organisational context. So where we got to in the last video was we got our Nexus repository up and running. So Nexus is where we are going to publish all of our chocolatey packages to and it's where we're going to be able to consume those packages from. So in the previous videos we looked at uh, doing a full uh, setup and installation of chocolatey on a machine that has full access to the internet. And we did that by first downloading the packages and then installing them from a local uh, folder that we created. Uh, we then looked at uh, taking all of those packages onto a machine that is fully disconnected from the internet and it doesn't have it can't download those packages from anywhere else and we did a full installation of our Nexus repository using again that local uh, packages folder. But now that we've got our Nexus repository up and running, what we really want to do is start making use of it. Uh, so in this video, we're going to look at taking those packages from our local uh, C packages folder and putting them into uh, the Nexus server so that we can start consuming them. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump in. So this is uh, the Nexus repository that we have. And if you'll remember from the last uh, video, where we got to was we set up the uh, sources uh, on our machine. So we set up this Nexus repository to be able to uh, consume packages from our test repository. So we called it test Nexus and from our production Nexus repository. So we did that on the Nexus machine. So the first thing we need to do is we need to go back to our workstation machine. The workstation machine is the one that we're going to do all of the work from. So to all intents and purposes, we shouldn't really need to come back to this Nexus server because we'll be able to consume the packages from it. Uh, without actually going on to it. So for the purposes of this video, I'm gonna move the Nexus server uh, out of the equation and I'm back to my workstation machine. So the first thing that we wanna look at over here is that we have got a Choco, well do the same Choco source list that we did on the previous machine. And on this machine, we only have the default chocolatey and the chocolatey license feed set up. We don't, this machine knows nothing about the Nexus server. So the first thing we need to do is we need to uh, get access to it. So if I uh, go up to Internet Explorer, one of the things that Nexus does is it provides a user interface. So if I, I should be able to go up to here and my machine was called Nexus. And if I try to access the Nexus server, which is on by default, it's on port 8881, this won't work, right? And it won't work because 8881, that port by default, isn't available on uh, Windows Firewall. So the one thing that we will have to do on our Nexus machine before we can do anything else is we need to open up that firewall port. So I'm gonna go into here and I'm gonna find the firewall settings and I'm going to click on this. And then once this pops up, I will go into the advanced settings. And then in here, I'm gonna add a new inbound uh, firewall rule that will allow me to make that port available. So I'm just gonna go through with the default settings uh, specifically and, and totally open up this port uh, 8081 across this machine. Your restrictions on your organization may be different. Obviously uh, do what makes sense for you. I'm just gonna call this the Nexus port and I'm gonna hit finish. So with that port added, you can see it there at the top and just to confirm it was 8081. If I move the Nexus server back out of the screen and come back to here and hit this again, then hopefully we should be able to now access Nexus from this machine. It's thinking about it. Still thinking about it. There we go. Okay, so now I have access from my workstation machine access to the Nexus server. So I can go ahead here and log in. So the default uh, user is admin that we set up last time. And if I log in with the password that I configured, then I'm into this machine. So uh, the two uh, feeds, the two sources that we set up were called uh, test repository and production repository. Neither of these have anything in it uh, currently. Uh, but the purpose of this video is to get some packages into there. So the first thing I want to do is I, want, I need to set up this machine 
to know about these repositories. So if I go into the settings here of Nexus and look at repositories, then from here I can get the full URL to the repositories. And that's something that's very important. So coming into Nexus here, you'll see that this is the source full URL of the test repository source. I'm just going to go ahead and copy that because I'm going to need it. So in the same way as we did last time, I'm going to add this as a source to the Chocolatey configuration so that Chocolatey knows about this source so that it can consume packages from it. So I'm just going to do Chocolate source add and I'm going to give it a name of a test nexus because this is the uh, test one and the source is going to be that one. So I'm going to add the source there and I'm then going to add another one which I think is just going to be prod but let's go back and check so we go back to repositories here and we click on our production repository which is this one and again we'll get that full URL out of Nexus for this so let's grab this one and again let's copy this and paste that into there and I'm just going to change the name here to be prod and with that done if we uh, clear the screen out and then do a chocolate source list again we should see in addition to the chocolatey sort the default chocolatey source and the uh, chocolate license one we've now got our test nexus source and our prod nexus source uh, so just one point of note, these validation warnings that I have here, uh, this was something that was new that was added into a, a recent version of Chocolatey. So basically Chocolatey is now aware of when there's a system uh, pending reboot. And this is what this validation warning is. It's, it's telling me that uh, there is a pending reboot on this machine, I need to perform a reboot. And that can have an adverse effect uh, when doing uh, installations because some application installation might fail so that's why it's warning me about that so it's nothing to worry about for what we're doing just here for here just now but it is something I want to take care of at some point now the final thing that we need to do uh, in order to be able to now push packages onto this Nexus repository there is the concept of an API key that I need so if I run the choco API key command we'll see that uh, currently there are no API keys configured uh, on this machine, on this configuration. But if I run the help command, what I'll see is how I can get one added. So if we scroll back up here and look for the examples, then I can do a, a choco API key, dash source, and then dash K for the, the API key. Now, one of the things we did in the previous video was we set up the NuGet authentication realm on Nexus to ensure that it was required for a new gate, an API key in order to push to uh, a specific feed. So what we can look at here is if I look at, if I so I went up to the top right here and I clicked on the admin user. And then from there on the left hand side, there is a new gate API key section. And from here, I can get access to what my API key is. So I'm going to need to put in my password again, because this is me getting access to a trusted piece of information. But this new gate API key is the thing that I need to do something with. So if I go ahead and grab that, what I can do, so it's uh, choco API key dash S, then the source URL, and then the value. So if I go down here and do choco API key, uh, dash S is gonna be the URL, and then dash K is gonna be what's on my clipboard. So again, if I go back to our configuration and look at repositories, we'll get those URLs out again. And all I'm gonna do is I am going to, uh, run that command so that when I attempt to push to my Nexus repository, uh, it will then know about my API key. So I won't have to add it every time. Now, if I were to run the choco push command, I could provide the API key at that point in time, but by storing it in the chocolate configuration, it means I don't have to provide it each time. So it's, it's a time saver basically. So let's go back to here and paste in the source. And I'm going to do the same thing for the production repository. Uh, so if we go up and then we'll put in prod here. So though these pieces of information that we're putting in here, these will be encrypted at rest in the chocolate configuration file. So it won't be uh, accessible to anyone. Um, and uh, well, they'll, they'll be able to see the encrypted form, but they won't be able to get the uh, API key directly out of it. So if I run the choco API command again, that's not going to work because that doesn't say API key. But if I run this, 
we'll see that we've now got two uh, authenticated uh, connections to the test repository and to the production repository. So what is it we're trying to do? Why have we done all, why have we done all of this work? So we're on to exercise three of the uh, the how-to guide on how to set up Chocolate for the organization. Now, we've effectively done th this first two parts here, which was to, uh, well, no, that's not quite true. The the exercise that's documented here is really circling around uh, using chocolatey.server as the uh, repository server for your organization. Now, we aren't doing that, we're using Nexus. So the this all of this in this exercise three, we're not doing any of that. Really what we're doing here is we are gonna be looping over the uh, NuGet packages to find out uh, where they are, and then we're ultimately we're gonna push them onto our Nexus repository. So in order to do that, if I come over here and I look, if I do an LS here, these are the packages that we're interested in. So these are the Nupkeg packages, the NuGet packages that we installed this server with and we installed the Nexus server with. Now, we did that by using the local C setup packages folder as the source of those packages. But again, that meant picking them up and putting them onto another machine and doing that again. And we want to avoid that. So what we're gonna do instead is we're gonna take all of these packages and push them up onto our Nexus server. And from there, any future installations can use the, the packages served from that repository. So we'll do a little bit of PowerShell here. So we'll just do get child item, uh, which and limit that to new get packages. So we run that. These are the new get packages. So we're just going to loop through these and push them up onto our server. So having got those, we can then uh, obviously for each object through them. And let's just ch uh, test this out. So we'll do. Uh, oh, that's not going to work. Let's do name just to make sure that we've got everything. Okay, so that's looking good. So what you need, we need to replace this right output with uh, what we want to do. So we're gonna do a choco push. So the choco push command is what we're gonna uh, uh, use here. Choco push needs a uh, location of the package that you want to push. So in this for each loop, that's literally just the name that we've got here as uh, the property that we're looping through. So we can do choco push and then the name, and then we need to give it the source that we wanna push to. So in the first instance, I'm gonna push them to the test repository. So again, I'm just gonna borrow this and I'm gonna paste this in here. Now, again, to reiterate, I could have put the API key in this command, but by persisting it into the chocolate configuration, it means I don't have to do that every time. So all I need to do is provide the source. So if I run this command, what it's gonna to attempt to do is it's gonna loop through all of the NuGet packages that I have locally, and it's gonna to attempt to run the choco push command and push them onto my Nexus feed. Now, if I run that, I think I'm gonna get an error and we'll see what it says. Yes, it does. So, so uh, chocolatey throughout, pretty much everything that it does is security first. If, we, if chocolatey finds that you're doing something that is potentially dangerous or potentially harmful to you and your environment, it won't let you do it. Not by default anyway. So what this error is telling us is that we're attempting to push to uh, a non-HTTP address. So at the minute, uh, in our configuration, our Nexus repository uh, uses an HTTP URL. It doesn't have a SSL certificate associated with it. So what Chocolate is saying here is, that's not really best practice. So in a future video, we will look at how we can set up uh, SSL search for Nexus and the various other components that we have. But for right now, I'm, I haven't got that set up. I've just got the HTTP URL, which is the default that comes with uh, Nexus. So I need to add a slight change here, which is to add the force command. So if we read the actual error message here that's come up, it says, use force if you understand the implications of this warning or are accessing an internal feed. So that's exactly what we're doing. This feed is internal at the minute. We don't have an SSL certificate. So we're gonna go ahead and use the force command. So that's just, a, I wanted to show you that um, just because it's something that would come up and it, it can throw you off a little bit. So what that's gonna do is it's gonna, as we said, it's gonna, it's looping through those nutkegs. Now some of these nutkegs are quite big. So let's have a look at that folder in Windows Explorer. So if we look at the C Choco Setup Packages folder, then 
at 780 meg, uh, 780 uh, megs. So it's uh, taking that package, it's uploading onto the Nexus server. Nexus server is then doing what it needs to do in terms of uh, breaking it apart, seeing what the contents are, uh, stitching everything together, and ultimately putting it onto the feed. So if I click on browse, hopefully by the time we get there, if I look at the test repository, then when we browse it now, I did click it, so it's not quite there yet. So uh, we'll wait for that to finish, and then I'll show you the first package going into there. Now, there is quite a few packages. Some of them are quite big, like I say. So I'm not going to sit and make you watch me do this. Um, but now that that one's gone through, if I click on Refresh here, what we'll see now within our Nexus repository and our test repository, we've now got that version of that uh, Adobe OpenJDK JRE package ready to be consumed. So if I open up another PowerShell session here, if I open up another one, and I say yes. Now, if I do a Choco source list on uh, source, oh, sorry, not Choco list, Choco source list. Let me get the command right. If I do a Choco list on source test Nexus, Whereas before we'd have, we would have got no packages returned. Now what we'll see is that there is at least one. Uh, there might be a couple now by the time we finish this. But now what we should see, uh, I should point out, I'm, I'm really straining the VM that I'm running all of this on. I've only given this VM about two gigabytes. Uh, it's running a full Java instance for the Nexus uh, server. I'm doing a bunch of stuff in terms of pushing packages onto it just now. I'm scared to look at what the CPU is currently doing. It's probably not liking me very much. Yeah, it's not really liking me very much. Uh, so looks like I might have some Windows updates happening in the background as well. So it's not ideal, but uh, we now see that we've got some chocolate packages coming back from that Nexus server. So now that we've done that, uh, ultimately what I, or what I would then do is I would also then push the same packages onto my production repository. And we'll come on to that in a later video and why I've got uh, two separate uh, feeds, the test one and the production one. Uh, but for the purposes of this, I'm gonna run the exact same command as I'm running here, uh, just pointing at my production repository. And once that's done, uh, we've then finished exercise three. So we've then got, we've got all of our packages inside our Nexus repository, and we'll be able to start looking at the next one, which is to create a package for the license file. So again, we're, we're, we're taking the, these baby steps and moving away from everything that we were doing manually with that uh, local installation script, and we are getting things to a point where we have a package for deploying the license file. So that will be in the next video. Uh, hopefully this has been useful to you. Uh, if you've got any questions, uh, feel free to reach out in the comments below and you can always catch me on Twitter as well. So for now, I'm going to say that that's an end and I'll see you in the next video.